One of the most successful salespeople I ever knew said the biggest mistake that other people in sales make is not asking for the order. Now this is called AFTO, ask for the order, and we'll pick up the concept in this unit, adapting the close and confirming the partnership. In this unit, we'll go into the proper attitude to display toward closing the sale, look at selected guidelines for closing, how to recognize closing clues and cues, methods of closing the sale, and what to do when the buyer says yes, and what to do when the buyer says no. Let's begin with proper attitude. Years ago, it used to be pretty much fair game to do nearly anything to close a sale, as long as it wasn't patently illegal. Nowadays, though, if you take the approach that whatever is not illegal is legal, and therefore acceptable, you'll create some hard feelings and most likely ruin your chances for any future business. You've heard the stories of those pushy salespeople. Well, the latest techniques do not treat sales processes as an I win, you lose proposition. Ethics rank high, and it's the cooperative partnership approach toward the meeting of the customer's need that wins out in moving the buyer to action. Remember, everything we've been saying about added value, well, that's also important in the close, especially the attitude. Working closely with the customer to solve a problem creates a relationship that adds value. Leading the client to a beneficial decision without making him or her feel trapped adds value. So when you finally reach that best solution, consider that a cue to AFTO. Ask for the order. Of course, you stress value to the process and all the way through. What are the key benefits to meeting a need or solving a problem? Summarize them. A continued reminder of the reasons for acquiring your product can help overcome these causes of buyer's remorse. Loss of options, fear of making a mistake, and social or peer pressure of how buying an item will look to friends or business associates. Closing the sale should be viewed as the beginning of a partnership. Now this goes all the way back to our discussions of the interesting approach and the discovery of the need. Now this then leads to the effective presentation and whets the appetite for the product. And then there's the commitment, and with that the subsequent close comes the continuation of working together. Here are some guidelines for closing your sale. In your planning, review any possible barriers. Take a look at the closing guidelines. Prepare your closing methods. Be ready to ask for the order more than once and practice the closing ahead of time. Then when you get into the actual close, look for and recognize closing cues. Stay focused on the greatest interest. Work out the tough points early. Don't pull any surprises. Keep the prospect involved. Always show confidence. Play to the buyer's communication style and ask for the order more than once. Focus on the dominant buying motive. What is it that sparks the most interest with the buyer? In longer selling cycles, get incremental commitments. Now, some deals just take longer to work out. Little steps along the way can work to build trust and confidence in the product as well as a solid relationship. Negotiate the tough points before trying to close. Find the points that might be deal breakers, and then make sure you satisfy all of the customer's concerns about the product before making it the order and asking for it. Avoid any surprises at the close. An example here is, don't quote one price early on and then spring it on the buyer at the close that the earlier price is only for the basic product or service, but that there will be some added cost for installation or training. Now that added expense may push the price out of reach and will certainly anger the prospect. There are points in the close where you need to show tough-mindedness and confidence. If you truly believe in your product, that the price is fair and that the buyer will be well served, then there's no need to be timid or apologetic. Finally in this segment, remember to be ready to ask for the order more than once. It may take several requests to get a yes, maybe as many as four or five. Of course, your requests will likely be spread out over a number of meetings. Now this brings us to the next section. How do we recognize those closing cues? How do you know when the buyer reaches that point of being ready to make a commitment to the deal? Well, some clues come up in the course of conversation. Others you may observe by watching. Verbal clues might be when the prospect begins asking questions about actually purchasing, having, or receiving the product, when the buyer makes positive statements about the product with an eye to actually getting and using it, and then if the buyer begins to mention requirements of what conditions will be need to be met before he or she can buy. 
Now, there are also nonverbal clues that you may notice. Now, these are things like positive facial expressions that show interest, nodding in agreement, the prospect leaning forward to hear your message, or an examination of your literature. Now, when you notice these clues, don't wait for the order. Do it now. Ask for it. Now, let's get into some specifics for closing the sale. A closing worksheet can help you focus on the situations you might face and how to deal with them. First, there's the trial close. Now, don't expect this to work right off. It's more designed to help gauge the buyer's willingness to commit anywhere along the line. Now, at your first opportunity, when you recognize a closing clue, ask for the order and see what happens. Then there's the direct appeal. Just ask for the order. Nah, but don't do it too early. Wait for a preponderance of evidence that the customer is ready to buy. Now you can try an assumptive close. Now sometimes this is referred to as the take it for granted close. You ask for minor decisions along the way with the assumption that the customer will in fact make the buy. Let's get the new model out to you in the next month and you'll have it in time for harvest and you'll save time, money and end up with a better year's output. Now this might be viewed as a natural conclusion to events. There's the summary of benefits close. Now this is a restatement of the advantage to buying your product. Sometimes it's called the step-by-step -step close. And then find a good transition to ask for the order. There's the special concession close. Now this is a special inducement for the buyer to close now rather than waiting. Oh, it could be a lower price, better credit, or some other feature to benefit the buyer. Be careful with this one, though. It may come across as high pressure, and some buyers are skeptical of salespeople who offer too many concessions. You might also try the multiple options close if you can. Now, this is where the buyer can make a choice between several alternatives. So here, you present more than one solution. Stop presenting choices when it's evident that the customer is getting overwhelmed, and then remove any possibilities that don't seem to interest the buyer. There's the balance sheet close. Now basically this is a t-chart with reasons for and against buying now. This can lead a prospect to making up his or her own mind. Sometimes the management close works. Bring in the top person in the company. Now this can add a feeling of importance for the buyer and increase the value of the product and perhaps even subsequent service after the sale. There's the impending event close. Sometimes this is the positive negative close. You can spell out a positive for buying now and a negative for waiting. Of course, once again, no one approach is best for all customers, and perhaps even no one approach will work with any customer. Now, in this case, be prepared to use a variety of closing techniques. You can adapt yourself to any particular buyer. And remember, just as in negotiating, adapt yourself to the customer's communication style, directive, emotive, supportive, or reflective. When the buyer says no, don't be discouraged or get mad. Learn to manage disappointment. It's part of the real world of selling. Show disappointment after a failed sales effort, and you may well close the door to any future sales. Learn from it. Analyze in your mind what went wrong and what you'll do better next time. Furthermore, make sure the sale is really dead. If you see there's a chance to reopen the process, review what happened, and be honest with yourself about any weaknesses that might be improved.